it's pretty amazing in the society we live in that we have such an adversary that is so powerful, so strong, and so manipulative that he is able to confront us in our weakest spots. He's able to nail us right where it hurts the most. He's able to kind of put a chink in the armor, you know, a little crack in the wall, you know, and kind of force some pressure on that point, you know, and make it even bigger than what it is. And you know, that enemy really is pretty conniving and pretty sneaky, pretty dangerous unless you deal with it. And you know who that enemy is, don't you? You are. You're your own worst enemy. <laughs> you really are. I know I am my own worst enemy. Hey, what can I say? I know my faults. I know my weaknesses. I know my sins. I know where I am and when I am in righteousness and out of righteousness. And sometimes that knowledge can bring you to a place of improper relationship as opposed to a proper understanding of grace and mercy. Because one of the things that God wants us to do is that the greater we grow and the older we become in the Lord, whether we be in knowledge, greatness, or in just affluence of the things that God has blessed us with, or influence by where of many people listen to what we have to say, we still have those issues that we wrestle with ourselves, our own conscience being our guide, that sometimes our conscience condemns us. And even though the Bible says that if our heart condemns us, greater is He than our heart, and that He is able to comfort us and to console us and to encourage us and to strengthen us, eh, you know, like I said, your own enemy is, you know, your own enemy is your worst best friend yourself. Sometimes, you know, that bad mamma jamma is you. <laughs> I mean, whoa, he's a bad mamma jamma. Look at the things that he will do, you know, and that's you. Yeah, you're a bad mamma jamma. That's right. <laughs> that's a fact, Jack. But the point is, you, lots of times, beat yourself up needlessly. Sometimes, eh, you know, you might get a little benefit out of it, but really, you know, at some point in time, you got to forgive yourself. you got to move on with what God has said about you as opposed to what you say about you. Oh, sure, you know the truth. Jacob himself, very well aware of the things and the ways that he did things and uh, stunts he pulled as well as the blessings that came his way irregardless of the things that he had done. And that's what God will do to you. You see, God doesn't stop loving you because you do something stupid. <laughs> as a matter of fact, one of the worst things that can happen to you in your life, as far as the way you feel about it, is that in the middle of your sin, God will bless you. And you'll go, ah, that's, that's the... God, you know, not now. You know, n not now. You know, beat me up, yes. Punish me, yes. Cause the consequences of my sin to come upon me, yes. But bless me? I don't think so. What can I say? A loving father doesn't choose to pick on you, chastise you, beat you up for who you are, or stomp on you because you made a mistake. As a matter of fact, if God chooses to educate you, he uses his own timing and his own way to teach you the way that you should go. But when he decides to bless you, he just does it, period. His timing makes no sense at all. He can just bless you because he chooses to. And that's one of the things you learn about knowing God as your Father as opposed to just learning about Jesus as your Savior. Jesus is Lord of all. He is King of Kings and He's Lord of Lords. When you want to see the Father, you can look to Jesus and you've seen the Father if you've seen Jesus. But there is a difference and there is a perspective of getting to know the Father as Jesus said, we should get to know him. That you begin to realize, yes, whoa, God is holy and he is sovereign. And it gives you a whole better appreciation of grace and mercy because you understand what loving kindness means because you have felt and been the recipient of it. 
because God chooses to love you because he chooses to pure and simple now you may think you're lovable <laughs> but while we were yet sinners Jesus died for us while we were yet ungodly God gave his son for us while we were still yet corruption God decided to make us in corruption and that kind of determination by God should cause in us a realization of just how little we know about God's love and how much we don't really appreciate how much God loves us. So much so that perhaps, perhaps we don't need to beat ourselves up so hard and so much by our own conscience condemning us or our own mindset framing us into a certain pattern that we think we are but rather we begin to step out of ourselves and look at ourselves as God sees us as God appreciates us and as God loves us and as we do we don't need to run around acting like you know egomaniacs or egomaniacs or getting a coach to coach us into feeling good about ourselves because that's not what I'm saying it's okay to feel down you know about your own sin it's okay to feel depressed at times about what some of the things you've done and pulled but one of the things that you need to address is the simple fact that God loves you and that when you do have those experiences that maybe you are your own worst enemy you can still recognize that God is your best friend yes your best friend your BFF you know your best whatever you want to call him because he's not just the best he's the only one that has stopped working and put to rest all the accusations that come against you for the rest of your life no matter who says them whether it be the world your friends your mother your father your children your niece your nephew your husband your wife your in-laws your outlaws the law the church a pastor a friend church divisions church strife your congregation your pastor your your upper echelon whatever it may be your authorities God's already laid them the rest what you're going through is just an experience of being taught to trust in him what he laid to rest you can put to trust and that's where we come to our place of conclusion about the matter of the things. The books are sealed. It's done. As far as God's concerned, it's over with. We're just going through the motions. It's just a day-to-day -day being a good mamma jamma as opposed to a bad mamma jamma. That's the way it works. It's the Spirit of God that's working to complete the work that has already been done for us and being done to us as he works in us their Redeemer is strong Ooh, yeah man that's mine my Redeemer is strong I know your manifold transgressions and your mighty sins I have laid help upon one that is mighty the Lord thy Savior and thy Redeemer the mighty one of Jacob mighty to save able to keep you from falling where sin abounded grace did much more abound he that believeth on him is not condemned but he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him is my hand shortened at all that I cannot redeem who shall separate us from the love of Jesus? I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, even yourself, shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so, though you may be your own worst enemy at times, 
really, you can't win. You're going to lose because God has already won. And he's done it in his son. So the fact that you are saved means you will be saved and that you will be redeemed because you've been purchased. Once you've been purchased, I'm sorry, the price has been paid. You're done. As far as God's concerned, you're sitting in the checkout line just waiting for God to check. <laughs> Trying to think how the checkout line works. It's like, how's the checkout line? As far as God is concerned, the order's been placed. It's been fulfilled. God is making the delivery, and you're just waiting to go home to find it. Guess what? There's someone waiting for you as a package that's being sent by God direct. And the Father himself is sending you home to be with him. Though your journey may be long, and you may be going by UPS, <laughs> the ultimate postal service, <laughs> God is bringing you home to Jesus. You are going to find yourself in a place that you were meant to be all along, and that God finally will bring you to a place of peace and of rest and of comfort. That you will not condemn yourself, contend with yourself, beat yourself up, or beat yourself down. Rather, you'll find yourself found in the grace of God that He has given to you because of what His Son has done just for you.